Oh, hey, this is Trav. I'm here with my friend Liza today, who's going to teach us how to spin wool into yarn. <laughs> The way that I learned to spin was I was at a party and there was a woman there who was spinning her dog's fur into yarn and then knitting it. And I thought, wow, that's really, really cool. And so I started, I'm a knitter, and so I started investigating how can you make your own wool. So you can spin lots of different fibers. So this is some alpaca from a woman in Tucson who raises alpaca and it is just so soft and just such a dream to spin. It's just a wonderful fiber that I bought. I bought this. And then um, we have a rabbit, an Angora rabbit, and I spin his fur as well. So there's all kinds of things you can spin. I love to spin wool because it's so strong and it has great tensile strength and it's just wonderful to work with. I have a piece of wool fleece that I got from a friend of mine and he sheared his sheep and he gave me some of the fleece. So what I did is I washed it in cool water with a mild detergent. You do not want to use hot water and you don't want to use any agitation because it will felt the wool. So I just washed it, um, picked some of the weed seeds out and the straw out. You can see there's still some um, seeds and some straw in there. But that's fine. We're going to wash it again later. So I just washed it a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is pull a piece off and I'm going to card it. So these are my cards. And I'm going to just put the fleece on the cards. Just place it on the cards like that. And then I'm just going to gently card it. And the point here is to get the fibers all going the same direction. Just gently pull up and then I can go the other way. Just gently card the fibers out. Does this help clean the fleece as well? It, it can. It's more meant to keep the fibers going in the right direction. But yes, you could pick some of the seeds out. Like there's a weed seed right there we could pick out. So then I'm going to take the fleece that I've just carded and I'm going to roll it off of the card and What's that called? this is called a row log and what I've done is I've made the fibers all go pretty much the same direction and this is a great way to hand card and then start the spinning process. So from the row log I'm going to spin, I'm going to join this not the best join, but I'm going to join this to what I am spinning. So you're just tying the roll log right into that yarn that's already being spun. Yep, I'm just spinning it in. It's not the best join, but that's okay. Here we go. So I push the treadles with my feet and that in turn spins the flywheel, which is driven by this string. So that string is acting as a belt. Yes, it's belt driven. And what it does is it then pulls the, it turns a bobbin. This is the bobbin. And here's what a bobbin looks like right here. It turns the bobbin. So here's three bobbins. And what is this called? Three bobbins. This is called a lazy Kate. Okay. And we'll get to that in a minute. But so what it does is it turns the bobbin and then it in turn pulls the wool through this, what's called the orifice, out of my hands. And wait, why are there so many of these little hooks on oh, the Oh, those are the guides. And so watch, I can just, it's so I can, I can evenly distribute the yarn on the bobbin. Gotcha. So it's not like a fishing reel where it automatically moves back and forth. You no. have to manually do that. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, and here we go. So what you're just doing is managing the twist and then giving the yarn to the bobbin. Because the bobbin and the spinning wheel are pulling the yarn and I'm managing how thick the yarn is. I'm also managing um, how much twist there is based on how my feet are going, how fast my feet are going, and then how fast I feed the yarn or the, the wool into the spinning wheel. 
So I am spinning this, these roll logs, I'm spinning this wool with a right hand twist. And when we get to the plying, what I'm going to show you is I will then ply three different um, strands with a left hand twist, which gives it even more tensile strength. Okay, Trev, now we're going to talk about plying. This is called a Lazy Kate, and I have three bobbins here of different fibers that I've spun all with a right hand twist. And what I'm going to do is take one of um, the strand from each one of the bobbins, and I'm going to join them with a left hand twist. So I'm going to put the Lazy Kate down, it goes right there, and I'm going to join it onto there. And with the left hand twist. So do you see what I'm doing is I am going to make a three ply yarn. It's much thicker, isn't it? It's much thicker and it's much stronger. And on this one, watch, I can make it really tight twist. You can see, or I can give it to the, I can increase the tension and give it to the Give it to the bobbin and make a big wide loose ply and if i stop it what you'll see is it's just a really nice strong yarn very nice now what about the person that wants to get into spinning but doesn't have a spinning wheel that's how i got started trav for very little money you can get a drop spindle and that's how i started it's really simple. You just use this as the way to get the twist into the wool. So you could take a dowel and a block of wood and essentially make your own drop spindle. Correct. Correct. And you spin that with one hand while you're twisting the, yep. the fiber with the other. Yep. Very cool. And it's really fun and easy. You're going to pull it up off the top and the twist comes in off the top. Very cool. Yep, just like that. So um, this is something that I, I dyed, this is actually silk, so I dyed the silk and then I spun it and then I knit it with some cotton and made this hop pad. Oh, so cool. that's cool. And then my um, friend Claudette spun this beautiful Corydale wool and it's this single ply and so I'm knitting the scarf out of that. So I just love, I just love working with the natural fiber.